Hello everybody and welcome to To Be Like Christ. No, you do not have a guest teacher today. I am just in disguise with my glasses. I really don't like wearing glasses, but every once in a while I have to. So that's where those are coming from. <laughs> Let's talk about first first not first chronicles. First Kings chapter 6 today. First Kings chapter 6. This is an interesting chapter. We're finally going to talk about what this temple is going to look like that we've been discussing for so long. David's been preparing for it. Solomon's been preparing for it. Now we're going to get it built. The PDF outline that contains all this information and the diagram, which you'll see on page number two, you can download that on our website for free if you want to. There's a link down in the description. So as always, let's start off with our timeline. When did the events of chapter six happen? Well, they would have taken place in the early years of the reign of King Solomon. He reigned for 40 years from approximately 1015 to 975 BC, according to 1 Kings 11, verse 42. As far as our key historical characters, we're going to keep it pretty simple as well as our map today. First of all, we've got Solomon. He was the third king of Israel and Judah. And then our second character, a group of people, is the people of Israel and Judah. <laughs> the reason that they're in here is because they contributed and they were drafted to work on the temple project because this was you know, almost a national project. There were tons and tons of workers involved. And then to our map, we're going to be in Jerusalem, which is the capital of Solomon's kingdom. Now, we know that the temple was built in Jerusalem at the former location of Arana's threshing floor. You remember where that came up previously? If you have a good memory, you'll know that that came up in the story of David's sinful census. David built an altar at Arana's threshing floor. You can read about that in 2 Samuel 24, 1 Chronicles 21, and 2 Chronicles chapter 3. Yes, yeah, so as we go over to page number two, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. We've moved our outline down. We don't have an application section today because we have a diagram. Yes, a diagram. Everyone loves a good diagram. I like it. I find it helpful in understanding what this place would have looked like in real life. And I will say that there are a lot better diagrams out there online. Uh, there's a really good one in the ESV study Bible that I referenced. And there's several other really good ones. So if you want to look up a diagram of the temple, feel free to leave this study afterwards and uh, skip mine and go look up a, a really good artist depiction of what the temple would have looked like. But I've done my best here to give you an, a basic idea of what it would have looked like, and I've tried to do it to scale. And so we'll come back to this at the end. Let's talk about the outline first. Scroll down here, only one section in this chapter. It's all about the design of Solomon's temple, verses one through 38. We're told that 480 years after the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt, which according to our timeline is 1491 BC, Solomon started building the temple. So that places, it, places us at 1011 BC, the fourth year of Solomon's reign. Just for your reference, a cubit is the, the key measurement in this chapter. Now, we don't use cubits very much anymore, but the ancient people weren't really into using feet and meters. So we need to talk about a cubit. A cubit is generally estimated by historians to be about 18 inches, or that would be about 46 centimeters. So keep that in mind as we go through here. I've converted some of the measurements to feet, you know, because I'm American. I think for those of you uh, who are on the metric system, it will not be hard to figure out. Okay. So let's talk about the dimensions and, and the measurements of this temple. The temple was 90 feet long, it was 30 feet wide, and 45 tall. Now this would have made it twice the length and the width of the tabernacle that was built by Moses in the wilderness, Moses and the, the people of Israel. So the temple replaces that, but it doubled its size. Now the only real challenging part of this chapter is in regards to the vestibule. Let's talk about what that was. The vestibule, or the New American Standard says the porch, was on the east side of the building. The priest would have had to pass through it to get to the temple proper, to get to the interior or to the holy place. Now we do know that the vestibule was 20 cubits wide and 10 cubits deep. There is some debate about the height. This is due to some differing manuscripts, like really old manuscripts from which the Bible was translated. So if you want to go down that rabbit hole, <laughs> feel free to do it. We can't do it in a five-minute study. But according to 2 Chronicles 3.4, the height of the vestibule was 120 cubits based on the manuscripts chosen by the translators of the ESV. It is 20 cubits based on the translators 
are based on the manuscripts selected by those who are translating the New American Standard Bible. So again, long rabbit hole. Check that out if you're interested. I'm certainly not a manuscript ev uh, uh, expert. Okay, surrounding the exterior of the temple on three sides, there were a series of three tiered chambers, which we'll point out in a second. These chambers were accessed through side doors, not through the temple proper. We are told something interesting, and that was that all the stones for the temple were cut at the quarry. They were cut somewhere else because there were no chisels or hammers that were used on site, which is really interesting. We're not exactly told why, but if you go back to like Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 5, there was an altar built there, and they weren't allowed to build the altar with, with tools, human tools. So this seems like it was a sign of building something sacred. So all the stones were cut somewhere else and then they were brought to the temple, which would be a pretty incredible feat of engineering. You'd have to really know what you were doing. Just as the tabernacle had two rooms, the temple had two rooms, the larger external holy place and then the internal most holy place, which was quite a bit smaller. The holy place, which is called the nave in several uh, translations, it was 60 feet long. The most holy place was half that long. It was 30 feet long, 30 wide, and 30 tall. So it was like a perfect cube, the most holy place. Both rooms were overlaid with gold. Even the floor was overlaid with gold. So you can imagine how incredible it would be to walk into this place just surrounded by gold. Solomon had more gold than he knew what to do with. <laughs> we'll find out from the upcoming chapters. In the most holy place were images of two cherubim. Now, what are cherubim? They're heavenly beings, like angelic spiritual beings. We don't exactly know what they look like in great detail today, but evidently God gave instruction to the people who created the tabernacle originally, and he helped them to design these things. Uh, and we know that because they were part of the tabernacle design. So here again, these people either knew from tradition what these look like, or God revealed it to them. There were two of these in the most holy place made of wood and overlaid with gold. And their wings spread across the entire holy place. So again, that ESV study Bible diagram, a lot better than any way that I can describe this to you. So go check that out. The cherubim were 15 feet tall a piece. The front door, which led to the holy place or to the nave, the front door of the temple essentially was made of cypress wood and it was also covered in gold. And each of the, the sides of the doors had two parts which folded when they were opened. The doors and the interior walls of the temple were adorned with carvings of flowers and cherubim and palm trees. So they were gold, but they were also decorated in these carvings. We're told that the temple foundation was laid in the fourth year of Solomon's reign. The temple was completed in the 11th year of his reign. The whole project would have taken seven and a half years. There's more that we need to talk about with the temple, more details, more, more things that went into this complex, but those are going to be talked about in later chapters. Let's go up to our diagram here. You'll see diagram of the temple as described in 1 Kings 6, have the measurements, approximates for the cubit there. We have the scale, 2, 5, 10, 20 cubits or whatever there at the top. And then, so let's take a look at this, this diagram on the left. First of all, the vestibule. We see that on the east side. This is why it's called the porch is because people would have had to pass or the priests would have had to pass through this to get into the temple proper. So the first room that they would have gone into as they're moving west uh, would have been the holy place. The priests would have gone in there. And then once a year, the high priest went into the most holy place on a special holiday or feast day, the day of atonement. Okay, so those are your, that's kind of the, the temple proper, all decked out in gold. Now you'll see the side chambers that surround it. These are those three tiered side chambers, which had, or were, were, seemed like they were used for storage. And they have a separate stairway down to, on the, uh, the southeast side of the temple, a special stairway that leads into them. So then we move over to the, the, the other diagram on the right side. The first thing you'll see is that man who's approximately six feet tall. I put that guy in there for scale. So you can see how small he is. Those are the three tiered chambers right in front of him or right to the right of him. They were uh, different sizes based on the levels. Now, you will notice that the temple is not a, like a massive structure. It took seven and a half years to build, but it, it really isn't like huge in comparison to a lot of other, you know, incredible building projects uh, around the world. And uh, it was beautiful, certainly, inside, 
but not massive. So that always, I guess, took me off guard. I, I thought, oh, well, you know, if you want to build the greatest building ever, you have to build the biggest building ever. Not necessarily. And then we have the, the doors leading into the, the temple. And uh, the, the temple is about 30 cubits or 45 feet tall, flanked by these, these three-tiered chambers. So uh, hopefully that's helpful to some degree. And again, I will try, if I can find it, to put a link to the ESV Study Bible diagram of this to give you an even better idea of what this probably would have looked like. But this is my humble rendition, <laughs> and uh, I hope it's been somewhat helpful to you. So that's 1 Kings chapter 6, and tomorrow we'll be back talking about more details of the temple, Lord willing. And uh, until then, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for studying with us today. See you tomorrow for 1 Kings 7.